Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Creation Myths. I have a really fun one for you today. Uh, I'm going to have fun. I think you're going to have fun. And I think there are a few people who I hope will watch this who are not going to have fun. So let's get right into it because today we are going to do the saga of uh, the Discovery Institute and Junk DNA and kind of our ongoing uh, discourse on this topic. So let me pull up my visuals for tonight and we're going to go through kind of the fallout so far from my recent debate with Dr. Casey Luskin. And we're going to see that something really important has happened since that debate just a few weeks ago. <clears throat> so what we're going to talk about tonight is how I made Discovery Institute change their position on junk DNA. By the way, I am doing this live and kind of off the cuff. So uh, for those of you who are live in the chat, let me know if the sound and visuals are okay. Thank you. As always, I always like to ask. So let's talk about what's been going on lately with junk DNA. I'll say up front, I don't expect this to be all that long. Uh, so let's just go through this stuff briefly here. So uh, this started kind of on uh, May 2nd. I had a debate with Dr. Casey Luskin about junk DNA in the human genome, and he said something really important in his closing statement. Right at the very end, he said, and I quote, I mean, it could be another 100 years before we cross that 50% threshold, 50% threshold for documented function in the genome but I predict we're going to get there and we're going to go above that. And when I pointed out that he had just said uh, that we cannot assign function to 50% of the genome and he, he then agreed and said, that's the case based on what we know. He said, we can't assign function to 50%, uh, not based on what we know is what he said. So I think, and I pointed out that that was a fairly significant concession in his argument that we cannot uh, assign function to 50% of the genome based on what we currently know. Okay, so I pointed this out in a short follow-up video. I wanted to highlight that statement from Dr. Luskin. So I put out this video, uh, which by the way, uh, all of the things I reference are gonna be linked down below. They are not as I do this live, but they will be shortly thereafter. So just be aware, if you want the links, they're gonna be down below. Uh, if you look and they're not there yet, they will be soon. So I pointed this out in a short video. You can, if you want to watch it, you can see it right there. And again, link will be down below. And um, that led to a commentary in a follow-up piece uh, from Discovery Institute. So uh, what happened, uh, this is just recently now, this is May 16th, and I'm recording this on May 18th, 2024. Dr. Jonathan McClatchy, an evolutionary biologist and Discovery Institute, I think he's a Discovery Institute fellow. My apologies, Dr. McClatchy, if I get your title wrong. He published this piece, uh, Reflections on Casey Luskin's Debate with Dr. Dan. And in that, he made two statements near the end that I just want to highlight for everybody. Okay, so the first one is that he says Dr. Dan is correct that, and this is, this is the important part, we currently know of specific functions for significantly less than half of the genome. And I want to highlight this phrase, significantly less than half of the genome, because that's going to be important later. I think it was a paragraph up. A paragraph up, he had said something else that I'm going to highlight, but this I highlight first just to show that like, hey, we're all on the same page. Me, Dr. Luskin, Dr. McClatchy, we're all on the same page here in terms of what we currently know about the functional fraction of the human genome, and it's significantly less than half. Great. We're good. So now a little bit above, he had said this, and this is a longer one, but I am going to read it because I want to make sure everybody hears and sees this. He said, uh, speak about the video I just showed you. Uh, he said, uh, he highlighted a remark made by Luskin in his concluding statement that scientists have not as yet identified specific functions for the majority of the human genome. Dr. Dan apparently thought this was a major concession, but we have never claimed otherwise. And Luskin, in fact, stated this up front in his opening statement. Now, there's one little piece of this that I want to highlight. It's this one right here. We have never claimed otherwise. 
because I don't think that's the case. What's going on here, I think, is a little bit of damage control because Dr. Luskin said something that is true, but that is at odds with the arguments that Discovery Institute and other creationists and creationist organizations have made in the past. So he's trying to say here, well, this is not different from what we've always been saying. We're going to see if that's actually the case, okay? Because the question we want to answer is, has this been Discovery Institute's position all along? And again, that position is that we know the function. We have the ability to assign a function to some fraction of the genome. Currently, they're saying significantly less than half. In the past, I think they said it was more than that, and I'm going to show you that that's the case. So let's find out together if what they're saying now is consistent with what they've been saying in the past. First, we're going to go back in time to March 28th, 2024. This is the kind of article that started this whole thing. Uh, what, what led to my debate with Dr. Luskin was this long story short video on YouTube that I responded to because it was full of errors. So in this piece by Dr. Casey Luskin on March 28th, 2024, we find this quote, quote, the concept of junk DNA long espoused by evolutionists has overall been refuted by mountains of data. Refuted by mountains of data. That sounds like we have data documenting function for most of the genome. In this same article, Dr. Luskin wrote in a section titled, What the Data Says. I'm just going to read this highlighted piece right here. Quote, a major nature paper by the ENCODE consortium, that's the 2012 paper, by the way, reported evidence of biochemical functions for 80% of the human genome. Lead ENCODE scientists predicted that with further research, 80% will go to 100 since almost every nucleotide is associated with a function. Now, the phrase there, this biochemical functions for 80%, that's actually not the complete phrase that they used in the ENCODE paper. And we're going to see that complete phrase in just a few minutes, but it's missing a very important part, uh, some very important context. So we're going to see what that is and how and why it matters. So now we go back to August 4th, 2020, a piece titled Next Phase of ENCODE Finds More Functional Information in Genome Junk. And in this piece, we have this line, uh, again, referring to that same ENCODE paper, able to assign a biochemical function to 80% of the genome. And I want to show you the exact quote from ENCODE here because this is important. This is the line from ENCODE that's being referenced here and in the more recent article by Dr. Luskin. The line is this, these data enabled us to assign biochemical functions for 80% of the genome. And I want to highlight that because that specific wording is very important because they didn't say they can propose functions for 80% of the genome. They didn't say they're hypothesizing or that they you know, have reason to believe they're saying we can assign biochemical functions for 80% of the genome. When you assign a function to a region of the genome, you are saying this specific region in the genome does this specific thing, right? You are assigning a function to part of the genome. That's really important because what this shows is that they're endorsing that encode position, that kind of maximalist encode position that, as we know, even in code has walked back from, but as recently as 2020 and 2024, they were still, and by they, I mean Discovery Institute, was still endorsing this 80% assign a function position. So let's jump further back in time to July 9th, 2015, in a piece called Encode Evolution and the Percentage of the Genome That's Functional. Boy, that sure sounds relevant to what we're talking about right now. Now, before we get into this, I'll point out that this is by Dr. Casey Luskin. And in our debate, I asked Dr. Luskin, what percent of the genome do you think is functional? And he declined to provide a number. We ended up, I think, settling at more than 50%. Um, we didn't want to give anything more specific than that. But he does in this piece right here, 
I don't know if he still believes this because this is from 2015. And you know what? To be fair, maybe he's changed his position since then. But at least as of 2015, this was his position. I should note that for my part, I think that the percentage of our genome that is functional is probably very high, even higher than 80%. Now, by the way, the context for this piece is that some members of the ENCODE team walked back their 80% functional claim uh, to somewhere south of 50%. And this next thing I'm going to show you is relevant for that, because here's what Dr. Luskin wrote about kind of those two camps, those two factions within the ENCODE group. ENCODE critics who say the genome is junky rely primarily on theory. ENCODE proponents who say the genome is functional rely primarily on data. And that's important because that implies that the people that are saying it's 80%, they're not going out on a limb to say that. They're relying primarily on data to say that, which is in line with what ENCODE has said previously, right? That you know we could assign biochemical function to 80% of the genome. What Dr. Luskin is saying right here is that claim is based on data. And the position of walking that back to below 50% is based on theory. But we have data that is 80%. Okay, that's what's going on right here. Now, those are just some examples of Discovery Institute's past output on junk DNA. Here's some more for you. Okay, again, we'll start in 2024 and just work our way backwards. Uh, this was published immediately before, uh, before my debate with Dr. Luskin. Here's a far from exhaustive, yet still exhausting, list of papers discovering function for junk DNA. They put over 800 papers in that piece. Casey Luskin on junk DNA's Kuhnian paradigm shift. That's from January of 2024. You go back to 2021, October 7th, scientific paper on repetitive elements slams junk DNA. And just one day earlier, October 6th, 2021, Oxford Journal, the days of junk DNA are over. So here is my question, my first question for anybody who watches this. What conclusion should we draw from Discovery Institute's junk DNA output over the years? Should we draw the conclusion that their position is that, well, we don't really know, but we have reason to believe that most of the genome is functional. Right now, we can't, we, it's significantly less than half, but we have reason to believe it's closer to 80%. Or is it reasonable to conclude that their position is that we have hard data right now for function in about 80% of the genome? Which of those positions do you think it is, viewers? I think it's pretty obvious that it's the second one. And my second question is even more important than that. My second question is this, are these two statements the same? First, the concept of junk DNA long espoused by evolutionists has overall been refuted by mountains of data. And we currently know of specific functions for significantly less than half of the genome. It is Dr. McClatchy's contention in his recent piece, that those two statements mean the same thing. Do you think they mean the same thing? I don't. I think those are two very different statements about the state of our knowledge of function in the human genome, and specifically what percentage of the genome has a known documented function. Are those two statements the same? Absolutely not. 100% obviously not. Those are two different things. Before, Discovery Institute endorsed in code, we can assign biochemical functions to 80% of the genome. After, now, we currently know of specific functions for significantly less than half the genome. Those two statements are not the same thing, right? We have repeated endorsements of the maximalist in code position, 80% of the genome. Now we have the admission well, actually, we can assign functions to significantly less than half of the genome. And remember, when Dr. McClatchy wrote this, when he said we currently know of specific functions for significantly less than half the genome, in that same piece, he said that we have long held this position. We, direct quote, we have never claimed otherwise. And I highlight the we here 
because he's not just speaking for himself. He is speaking on behalf of Discovery Institute. He's saying, we are not changing our position. We've never claimed otherwise. This has been our position all along. So the takeaway here is that Discovery Institute changed their position on junk DNA. And remember, this came about because of my debate with Dr. Luskin. He said in that debate, the statement that led to McClatchy's article, or at least led to that little part of McClatchy's article, where McClatchy kind of gives up the game, which means I made them change their position on junk DNA. I did that. Are you not entertained? We did it. So what's the big, what's kind of the, the takeaway here? What is the conclusion I want you viewers to get from all of this? Whenever a creationist claims that we have documented function in most of the genome, you can show them Dr. McClatchy's article. You can show them the statement where he says, Dr. Dan is right. We haven't documented function just you know, significantly you know, significantly less than half, right? You can show them that statement, right? When a creationist cites in code 2012, you can say, what are you talking about? Discovery Institute doesn't even endorse those findings anymore. So anytime this topic comes up, throw it right back in their faces. We have Discovery Institute, the number one intelligent design advocates anywhere, right? And I'm going to call them creationists because intelligent design is creationism. That's you know, a, a, a historical fact, okay? We've got creationists saying ENCODE is wrong in the, their 2012 paper, and we, Discovery Institute, don't even buy those findings anymore. So the old junk DNA argument, to summarize this, we can show function for the vast majority of the human genome. That's the old position, right? We have all this data. It shows that most of the genome, 80%, is functional, right? Specific functions for specific things. The new junk DNA argument, we can't show function for over half of the human genome, but we think we'll be able to in the future, right? We have now changed the argument. So anytime this comes up going forward, hold creationists to it, especially Discovery Institute, because I guarantee you they are going to try to play word games and do some semantic silliness going back into these old articles. Oh, we didn't actually say this. We did blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. Go back through the historical record here. The clear meaning of their output, the meaning of the words that they said and the words that they quoted, the argument they have been making all of this time is that we have clear, unambiguous evidence that most of the genome, 80% is functional, and we can assign specific functions to it. Now they're walking that back and saying, eh, we, you know, look, we can't really assign functions. Significantly less than half is actually has a known documented function, but we think it will be more. When they try to walk that back, don't let them do it. Hold them to it. And that goes for Discovery Institute and any other creationist that's going to break out junk DNA and the ENCODE project as an argument. We have a whole lot of ammunition now. Everybody watching this who engages with creationists can use it. And that's where I want to leave it tonight. So thank you all for watching this, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, I don't have anything else to add. I've got some other stuff coming up on the channel over the next few weeks that I think you all will enjoy, including if you're watching this before the end of May 2024, I will rebroadcast the entire Luskin debate uh, about a week and a half from when I'm doing this live right now. So thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a great night, and I will see you next time.